to our practical series where we cover uh, small practical things that we do in cybersecurity and threat intelligence on a regular basis. In this case today we're going to touch on SSH keys. Uh, we use SSH keys in cybersecurity and threat intelligence to sign content or to authenticate. And so having those handy is very important. Understanding how to create them and how to view the ones you have, of course, is equally important. We're going to go through those steps today. You'll see in front of you I've got Linux, Linux Ubuntu to be specific of the flavor. And I'm going to talk about it exclusively today. You can do the same things in Windows or Mac OS. In fact, the commands are almost identical. And the reason I'm focusing on Linux is the majority of our tasks, for safety reasons, are primarily done in a virtual machine, and typically a Linux virtual machine, because our host system is either Windows or Mac OS. And that's important for many reasons. Just to touch on briefly here, typically you create a virtual machine to run processes in when they, you want to create a separation between your host and what you're performing as far as an action. So if I'm reviewing code, I'm looking at something uh, that might be phishing, or there might be an accident when I, you know, so like I don't want to accidentally execute anything. I don't want to accidentally run or compile code. I don't want to necessarily change things. I want to be able to test things out rapidly. And so I'll use a virtual machine to do any and all of those tasks. You know, it creates a separation. It's typically a different operating system than my host. That way, in case I do accidentally execute a piece of malware, I do run something. You know, I've got DNS, let's say I've got my networking killed so that it's not going to go out to the internet. If it does get released, it's only in the virtual machine, so it won't affect my host. And I could, in fact, use that as a way to examine various types of behavior. So many reasons why you would have a setup like that. And it's something that we will touch on in a future series. But for now, let's talk about SSH keys. Now, I did not used to teach how to check for an SSH key in the past, but it's very important that you know what SSH keys you have. So one of the things you can do on, LA, on Linux is pull up LS and ask for a listing of the contents of your SSH keys. And so we can do that. You can see I have some in there. If you didn't want to do it that way, you could actually change to that directory if you wanted and actually do it that way and do your LS and look at it in that fashion if you like. And in fact, I'm going to tell you that before you begin creating one, you actually want to move to your SSH directory just out of convenience because otherwise, if you are not paying attention and you just follow these directions, you're going to create your SSH key wherever your cursor happens to be at. So if I had started here where I was just kind of in my home, that's where the, the key is going to reside. But since I want to be lazy and simple, I'm just going to change to here and make sure that when I create them, they're going to show up in the right places. So let's go ahead and run one together. Let me clear the screen here. SSH keygen is the command that you're looking for. You're going to tell it what kind of encryption. In this case, we want to use the 25519. And I'm going to pass it the credentials of, let's see, I'm going to do example at google.com instead of example.com. This is where you would put your email address that you're going to be employing as the credential. If using GitHub is the example, you'd use your GitHub credential here that you're using to sign in. So we'll go ahead and create one. It tells us it's creating a public private pair. It gives us that encryption. You enter the file in which to save it. Now, if I if you default, it'll try to save it as the name of the encryption, and there's already one of those. Here, I'll just show you what that looks like. You'll see here it already exists. Do you want to overwrite? So I'm going to say no, and it's going to stop. So let's rerun that, and it's going to go through that process again, and we're going to call it my cool key, because that's what it is. It's my cool key. We're going to hit enter. It's going to say, do you want to enter a passphrase? Uh, passphrases are awesome if you want to type in the passphrase instead of some other method. I personally don't like them because it's just one more thing I have to memorize. So I typically hit enter here twice to get past it. You can enter in a passphrase if that's your preference and utilize that instead. It tells me what my SHA-256 fingerprint is. You can see that right here. And now my SSH key is associated with example at google.com. And here's my random part image. Now let me clear that. If we um, we do a check again for SSH. Well, first off, since we're in the directory, you can just go ls. You can see that they're there. If I leave this one and I'm like, okay, I want to, I created it somewhere else. I could go back through my process and check again. And there you'll see, there's my two keys right there, my old one and my new one. Go ahead and clear that. But right now it has not been added to SSH agent. So let's check that out. So go here. Here, I think I did that right. I think I forgot a double quote. I did. Let's, let's not do that. Ooh. It tells us what our um, PID is for that particular agent. We want to make sure it's running, of course. That's what we're doing there. 
And then uh, now that we know that we have that active, let's go ahead and add this bad boy in. SSH, tell it where it's at. And it was my cool key. Boom, identity added. So we've now added that to the agent. Um, if for some reason you uh, had any questions, let me know. But you know, these are meant to be short, good practicals. Uh, so we viewed our key, we've created a key, we check for key. Maybe you want to look at the key so we can run cat and take a, take a glance at it. For some reason you actually need to see it. You could, there you go, you can see the actual hash again. Um, and pretty much that's it on utilizing. Um, so uh, just to recap, we have learned to check for a key, create a key, add it to the SSH agent, and outright view it. So pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to this particular process, but these are integral. Uh, one thing I will note is that SSH keys can easily age out, so keep an eye on them. If you're not using old SSH keys, it's good to get rid of them, delete them, make new ones. Uh, as new encryption algorithms become available. It's smart, again, to stay abreast of those and upgrade and update as frequently as possible. So that ends this practical task, and thank you for your time. If you like this video, please take a second and click like. If you like what you're seeing and you like the content that's on the channel, please subscribe to our channel so you can get future updates. Thank you.